the 13-Minute Mystery. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. Unsolved Mysteries, Episode 2, 13 Minutes. Patrice Anders abruptly vanishes from the salon she owned with a 13-minute window of time. Exactly 600 days later, her case takes a shocking turn. And that is the description from Netflix. Mm. So you know what we are getting into. Yes. And if you have not seen this episode, there will be spoilers. Many. It's all spoilers. All spoilers, but... This one has a character in it, and I'm saying a character oh my God. that I think parallels, in in a way, there's not as much information as the Tiger King or uh, mm-hmm. Robert Durst from The Jinx, because it's mm-hmm. so odd, and you might think this guy did it. You will think this guy did it. If- I mean, we'll go through some of the theories about other people who, who did do it, but... You're right. We don't get a lot of information. And I'm conflicted because it is about her and her mystery and her disappearance. And he knows that he's keeping it buttoned up for cameras. This is him, like, being TV ready. So when you know, it's like Tiger King, where it's like, he finds this acceptable to present himself this way. So just... Imagine what it's like to... Yeah, in his home. Be him when the cameras are off. No cameras. It is crazy. But I like this one a lot because I love a timeline. Like, I love a definitive timeline. And I love my type A brain loves working within, like, this time frame, this time frame, this time frame. So the timeline is huge in this. So at 8.30, Pam Shepard arrives for her 9 a.m. appointment with Patrice. And she seems distracted. Uh, Pam says that she seems kind of short, uh, not in the best mood. At 11.05, Pam Shepard leaves. At 11.11... Paul Cantor arrives for his haircut. At 11.27, he leaves because he got a phone call. And that is verified with cell phone records. At 11.37 to 11.50, those are the 13 minutes that we're talking about, the name of the episode. It's not like nothing happens in that period of time. At 11.45, a customer calls and Patrice is short on the phone with them as well. It's a two-minute call. And then at 11.50, someone else calls the salon and it is there's no answer. Also during this time, there is a car that arrives and leaves, and this is a huge part of the mystery because that is also verified, but we still don't know. We know a little bit about the car. We don't know its origin. We don't know who owns it. We don't really know that she gets in or out of it, I don't believe. I also love when like, and it's the same thing with uh, the rooftop one, the, the first episode. I love when it's like, they're in the middle of doing something and they're gone. So when authorities arrived on the scene, uh, her lunch was left uneaten. Her car keys and purse were left in the salon. Her car was moved from its spot. There's some money taken from the cash register. I forget how much it was, but it's like... It's not a clear robbery. Yeah, it's just like a day in the life and someone just vanishes off the face of the earth. And it all happened within these 13 minutes, which is the crucial part of this whole thing and what happened in there. And her car was normally parked on the side. It was parked out front, which was not normal. And there was at least two separate accounts of people Mm -hmm. seeing a blue car. Was it a Lumina? Was it a Taurus? Yeah. And where does that fit in? And I think a a lot of what's happening is to the people out there that if you knew somebody at that time with a car like that and they came home in they seem strange or out of sorts that's what they're looking for and And that's so simple too it's like do you know someone with a blue car in the area with a georgia plate like it seems like a pretty simple directive to try to find like canvas the area finding someone with that criteria but for whatever reason they are at a complete standstill with it yeah, so Patrice Anders was 38, and she owned her own hair salon in Cumming, Georgia. Her remains were found mm-hmm. on December 6, 2005, in Dawson County, Georgia, mm-hmm. which is about, I think, six to ten miles away. Not super far. Yeah, and there was decay. It, the body was found 
in a in a wooded area as as bodies are wont to do on these shows but also the decaying had not been verified that it was done there so it may have been in a in another location and then taken to this place it's hard to say also missing was her wedding ring not found anywhere and that is either well, if somebody wanted a free wedding ring and to pawn it, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Totally. Or, or, or it was a little more personal than that. Yes. And the whole thing about this case feels personal, whereas um, the one with Ray Rivera feels much less personal if we're comparing it to another Unsolved Mysteries. This one feels like it came from inside the house, maybe literally, <laughs> but also because of the absolute hatred between the other members of Patrice's family. We have her son who seems pretty cool. Pistol Black. Pistol Black. His name is Pistol Black. Very cool name. He has cool tattoos. He lives with his father or I don't know if that happened anymore, no, he, but he, yeah, he was with his he's father. 15 at the time mm-hmm. and he was on the outs with Rob Anders. Yeah. At, and to be fair, it's not uncommon for a teenager to be on the outs with everybody, authority, anyone. Mm-hmm. And that's not strange at all. No. But the relationship between Rob and Pistol got strained pretty quick. And that's yeah familiar probably to some people out there, including myself. It's a you know common familiar yeah. thing. But you also think even if you're someone's stepdad that you're – an adult, you're more mature, you're a little more level-headed. You think of teenagers well, as Well, he's being- very mature because he's about 20 years older than Patrice. <laughs> he is. Which is no judgment, but... Yeah, but he also brings that to light, which I, at first, when I was watching it, thought that that was really cute, the way he, like, so affectionately talked about her. He was like, I didn't deserve her. She was beautiful. I went in for a haircut. And I can't believe I married this woman. Like, he felt so lucky. And then it, like, turns and distorts from there. Um, but yeah, him and Pistol have this contentious relationship uh that during the time they would fight but he admits to that he doesn't admit to him to fighting with patrice which other people who are interviewed said that they were fighting and that's also a lot of the the reddit comments too he admits fighting with someone who's still alive and not the one that's dead mm-hmm. that can't oh the one that's conveniently dead yeah no we've never fought we always got along 100% of the time that's right Take it from me. Exactly. Don't talk to anyone else. Just listen to me. We never fought. We were very happy. Who did this? Not and, me. And statistically, I mean, a family member is usually the suspect that you would put your money on. Yeah. And there, I mean, this is overkill. Pardon my this what, is, use of the word, but it's 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 hard not to think it's this guy absolutely he also like i mean just he had the things that he admits to doing are so crazy and strange and just to begin so after she goes missing and uh, not before her remains are found he changes all the locks so pistol can't get into the house that he lives in but he's not worried that oh hey what if she shows up here yeah. she's running from somebody needs to get in and i've locked her out so he's already like well listen I don't know what happened to her, but let me change the locks. Let me change my my life immediately. Yeah. But I, what would I know? How do I know? Yeah, and that's exactly. that's really key. Exactly. It's very, very strange to just to begin with. And then Pistol doesn't have access to anything after his mother disappears and then is her remains are found. So he doesn't get pictures. He doesn't get the ashes. He doesn't get anything. But somehow this guy, um, Rob – gets to hang out with the skeleton and have, like, moments alone with the skull of his deceased wife. Like, he gets all of this time, and, like, the time that they spend to giving him airtime is very telling also. Because you're just sitting there with him as he's describing going to the coroner's office and, and getting the body ready for the funeral, and just, you know, you know that he's running the show here. And it's... Gross. And Pistol last saw his mother when she dropped him off at school that morning. Mm-hmm. I feel like she might have been a little distant or was seemed like she had something on her mind. Mm-hmm. Like they, And I, they didn't make it known that, listen, sometimes people are like that. 
Mm-hmm. How often does that happen? Is it once a week? And that happens. Yeah, I mean, totally. you know, seven days a week and you have a routine. Some days you might be super keyed in and locked in and some other days you might be a little scattered. But it seems like she either had a, a bad feeling or she knew something was going on or she maybe had an argument with Rob. Yeah. Or – And you can say the same maybe. things too with, with the calls and stuff from the salon. So she could have just had an off day or she could have – really had some things weighing on her. And like her friend said that they fought, she wanted a divorce. They were not happy. And maybe today was the day that something was going to happen. And when you, when you really meet Rob in this episode, uh-huh. you, you are not surprised. It's not like things no. like, well, he seems like an okay guy. No, he, I don't know how this guy could even go on a job interview with his behavior and his mm-hmm. personality. Mm-hmm. It's really strange. I don't want to, I never want to shame people in the way they, want to grieve or the way they live their life. But when you really, really, really seem complicit in this and you don't, I don't know, you seem like really like a, when they people talk about sociopath, mm-hmm. like I think this is yeah w- what they're talking about. I know. I don't mind shaming this guy. I think it's crazy. You see her, you see Patricia's son sitting there at a table with nothing. And then you see like a 15 minute cut of, this guy just like taking the ashes out of the box and like every little bit and he's crying. It's like he slept with the ashes and like cuddled up to the box for a year after it happened. And you're like, what? The f-? Also this guy, which this I found to be very disturbing, which which people are talking on Reddit about is that he has a degree in criminology. And he lets you – he's like, well, I have a degree in criminology. Why would I do something like mm-hmm. this? Knowing that I have a degree in criminology, mm-hmm. but is that you know what I mean? Like, I, I took a lot of like psychology classes. Would yeah. you be like, why would I? Why would I play mind games with somebody? I took community college psychology. <laughs> you know, or it's like a you know, like a, yeah. it used to be like a doctor. Like it's like, oh, uh, why would I eat sugar? I'm a doctor. I would only do things that are healthy. I mean, yeah, it doesn't like, it no, doesn't no, make no, any sense. Yeah, that doesn't absolve you from doing. It's like goading you are studying the audience. Yeah. And also just the way he talks about stuff. He's on the defense, really, instead of being like, I don't know where she was. Like, the way that he talks about every detail of this, it just feels like he's trying to be like, I didn't do it. I really missed her, but I didn't do it. I didn't do this. I miss my wife. I love my wife. We never fought. I would never murder anybody, especially my wife. And what adds to this is there are other suspects. There were serial mm-hmm. killers yeah. that were out there. Gary Michael Hinton mm-hmm. and Jeremy Jones, both previously arrested for murder. Mm-hmm. And Jeremy Jones confesses to the murder. Yeah, I think they both did, actually. Okay, and um, and but then it really doesn't... It, they it's recanted. recanted and yeah. it doesn't really add up. If you were a serial killer, you were already incarcerated. You already had so many murders under your belt. Why wouldn't you just confess to one more? At this point, you're like, sure. Especially if, if for some reason, attention is... Yeah. I mean, I can't, you know get in the mind of a serial killer, but I imagine possibly that, you know, attention or maybe taking credit for something you didn't do mm-hmm. might be part of that. I, I don't know. Yeah. And again, it's like, it's very, I think the serial, I think it is interesting that two serial killers who are active in the area during this time, I mean, that just makes me feel very unsafe in general, but like, that feels very convenient that that would be the yeah. case. That we're in, a, we're in an area and a climate where, you could maybe get away with murder because maybe there's not enough police or there's not Mm -hmm. enough manpower to kind of cover these things. And and a lot of these things do happen in Mm -hmm. places. They do happen. Sure, they happen in Manhattan or Los Angeles. But things like this where there's just like not a lot of cameras, there's not a lot of people, Mm -hmm. you you, you almost know everyone in town or you know the lay of the land. And yeah, if you got two serial, like a minimum of two serial killers running, a minimum, Mm -hmm. you've got a bare minimum of two running around, this woman getting murdered and them not solving it Mm -hmm. seems very possible and plausible. It's not a, it's not really like a strange thing. Mm -hmm. And you look to see where her, her salon is and it is, it's like on a kind of like a main road, if you want to call it a main road. And it's like, people want to stop there. I need directions. I'm lost. I'm just cutting through. That would be the place to go. Yeah. So there is a lot of traffic there, but also how many people are 
getting murdered from there. I think one of the guys said he needed a car getting jumped. He's like, oh, I needed a jump. Mm -hmm. And then I forced her into the car. Yeah. I just think it it was also like the parking spots are really close together. Like, again, you'd be seen. I just don't think a serial killer would do it. And I'm all for, you know, I get sometimes where it's like in a bad, like you think about, um, I was just talking about um, Michael Jordan's dad being killed. And it's like, that just seems like it's just like, a person who's in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I can fully accept that, but this does not feel that way. It doesn't feel like a serial killer type of situation. Again, especially when you watch her husband talk at length. We're really encouraged. If you haven't seen this, it, please. we're not doing it justice. Watch it. Like most things, we're yes. not doing it justice. Please watch it just for that mm-hmm. kind of, uh, you know, study on – you know, the human condition, I guess, or yeah. how, how someone could be. Yeah. But it, even thinking about it in all, like, I've been trying to think of them all too, as like these pieces in a larger series and, and these characters that exist and what they're trying to let us know through different, you know, ways that they're filming. Like when we talked about before with the Berkshire's UFO, there's one missing piece of the puzzle, a break. <gasps> Hello, hi, how are you? Hi. Are you hanging in there? We're back. We hope you are. Yeah, how are you doing? Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Are you, you, uh, you look a little pale. <laughs> we all do. We've been inside for four months. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> well, we hope you're well. Mm-hmm. We've had some people reach out yes. and say, hey, can you send a care package? Yes. Or if you just want to vent, absolutely, that's mm-hmm. what we're here for. Yeah. We want to say hello to the mayors. Hello, Mayors. Brandon Gaddis. Chris Witt. We got Jeanette Link. We have Ben Forsyth. That's right. Lauren Pasick. Yes. I think we've <laughs> got them all. And anyone who's contributed to our Patreon, which is mm-hmm. patreon.com slash ghost town pod, got bonus episodes, episodes without ads. We'll have mm-hmm. a new bonus one coming out very soon. Yes. And we thank you for all the support. And we've gotten some very, very bizarre. Reviews on Apple Podcast, uh, bad, strange ones, which you can look on there. Hey, listen, we're not I, – I, the last thing I want to do is be like, hey, check out these bad reviews. But I noticed this <laughs> this individual went on a lot of popular po- – I mean, we're, yeah. we're way more impactful and interesting than us. But we've gotten, uh, we've gotten kind of roped in with them and yeah. uh, it's very interesting. But we got some nice ones like from uh, Stimmy. Stimmy. Yeah, Stimmy the, with the dollar sign. I think it's great. Rebecca needs to talk more about her dating life, lol. Well, well, well. So if you can leave a rate and review on Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. rate five stars, we would appreciate it. Absolutely. We have a YouTube channel mm-hmm. that is getting – there's a lot of comments in there. Mm-hmm. It's Ghost Town Podcast. We actually had somebody from the Berkshire's UFO episode, Tom right. Reed. Tom Reed. Commented on – that episode on ghost town so check it out and then i said listen if you want to you have information you'd like us to share Mm -hmm. speak your piece so he did email some information and we will talk about that towards the end of this episode so if you want to very fun sometimes we have people that from the episodes that do reach out that they catch wind of it which is very interesting so sometimes i'm not like and everyone's cool and and i think we you know have a pretty somewhat fair and balanced <laughs> yeah god forbid you help us be more credible you know yeah. like please give us materials that we can learn from and share with others and we're not you know trying to hide information at any time and, no. and if you if you're out there and we've done an episode on you or you have information please we're happy to correct our wrongs or yeah. just a- add to it and use the platform to do that so we will mention that at the end yeah we're just bumbling around here searching far and wide we need help. Yeah. We need a Watson, and you could be that Watson. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you have a relationship where you're like, you're my Watson. You're my Watson. You're mm. my Sherlock. Mm. You know that happens, right? Oh, God. Awful. That's a crime. But you know what is also a crime? Finding out what happened to Patrice Anders. That's right. Put down is... that skull and get back to the podcast. And it's interesting because... You would think like, well, anyone who carries around the skull of their former wife mm-hmm. seems like a pretty chill dude. But that's what yeah. Rob Anders 
did. He slept with her ashes. Mm -hmm. He had the, I don't know you could do this, but he had the coroner rearrange her bones. Mm Mm-hmm. So he could see, see her. her mapped out, which I don't even know, even if you did murder your wife, why you would want to do that. I, like, I don't know what the purpose of this is. It's a very odd thing. And they kind of talk about it as if like, yeah, you know, when they, when you, you when you personally request to have that done, yeah. you, know, you might see it if they're doing you know, forensics or they're trying to figure out what happened. But he was just like, oh, just for my own recreation i guess yeah he wants to see the bones in the placement and then cradle the skull and have a moment with his dead wife's skull and if it, again like that doesn't mean you're guilty but it doesn't but mean you're not it's fucking weird <laughs> yeah. it is fucking can we all agree that it is fucking weird if you, and you're a weirdo and i like weirdos but not that much weirdo when you put it all together it is it's it's pretty bad and then he would make I don't know, kind of, I don't think there's flipping comments, but he wonders if she was, quote, kept captive for a while and used as, quote, somebody's toy. That's your, what? that's your contribution I, yeah. to this. It's awful. It's just, it, it reeks of guilt. You know, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And I wonder just seeing this guy, I think about seeing him in, in everyday life. And if you would just pinpoint him, because all we've seen of him is from this Unsolved Mysteries. I was trying to look for like any video of him online or like some other clues that we could use to get his personality. Is he just a weirdo? Is he a weirdo murderer? I I mean, and and try to get more information, but there's nothing out there really that they I keep the find. pressure on like news wise. Will they, you know, there'll be m- occasional recent updates Mm -hmm. so the pressure's being kept on but i think it's a thing where and you mentioned this on you know the ray rivera episode Mm -hmm. that somebody knows something yeah somebody knows something and and they haven't told and maybe they're taking that secret with them to the grave and that may be happening but shining a light on this person isn't benefiting him maybe in his own mind and if he gets but I think now when people look at you, there's enough people that watch Netflix and Unsolved mm-hmm. Mysteries, plus all the news coverage, yeah. Reddit conversations that it's got to be something where it's like, uh, it just, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people on any documentary or reality show, they're like, hey, the way you edited this <laughs> is, yeah. is, is not – it makes me look like somebody – who did I even think I did it now after yeah. watching it? It's like, like, where was I that night? Well, you probably were. And he was, and, and there is like, he's not one of the top suspects. He never really has been. I think he had like a loose alibi, but there was also a theory that he got a hitman to come and take her in that car and, and kill her. Because I guess the alibi is that where he was based on a receipt that he kept because we yeah. always, we I mean keep, when, I love keeping my oh, gas station I, I, receipts I love it and I make sure to have it with me in, in my hand 45 minutes away yes yeah. and I make sure it's like well why would I have this receipt mm-hmm. that I've laminated you know that I know said, I'm, I'm, that he didn't yeah, laminate he didn't but, laminate. but he's not framed it's not on his wall but close yeah. like he's he is ready to show this yeah he's like see this I couldn't have I was over here but I get also absently putting like a receipt in your wallet or something. Could happen. Or whatever. Absolutely. I don't know. We don't know. Like, and also, but could somebody I feel have like- taken his? If I could, I take his car and get gas with his credit card and use it as an alibi. Did, there's no, there's no video footage. That yeah, puts I'm gonna need those there. prints. I'm gonna need the prints on that wallet. So it could be anybody that mm-hmm. could be like, hey, listen, you go take my car, mm-hmm. get gas. Have the receipt, give it back to me, and that's the only thing. Yeah, it's let's that, switch cars. I, that's I'll not take conclusive. this blue Acura, and you take my car, and we'll do that. And the investigators, you know, they say that it's unlikely that he was involved, but not impossible. And then you see him cradling the ashes of his murdered and sleeping wife, with them, yeah. and you're like, this guy's got to be a part of this. But he does, it doesn't really seem to come from a pl- it comes from a place of somebody who was very possessive, and mm-hmm. it's. Absolutely. And he slowly became someone who's like, why do you need to have friends? Mm-hmm. Why do you need to have this son? And that is the yeah, it's not new. Classic abuser tactic. It's absolutely. It's just mm-hmm. classic. It's it's te- all this is very, very textbook. Mm-hmm. And some other things he speaks down on the parenting of the son. Yeah. So even as she's gone, he, you know, he's like, hey, listen, he let this kid run wild. And maybe she did. Yeah. And He's a teenager and maybe he had a chip on his shoulder and all those things. But 
that's not an excuse for no. And give this guy give Pistol a fucking picture of his mom. But this you know? guy wants to control. He's like, yeah. she dies with me. Like, yeah, I'm the keeper of all of, of her, all of her everything. Stuff. And so she will have died, and I will have had the whole of her and yeah. win at the end. And I don't know. I think people see that. I mean, it's yeah, it's very proprietary. It's crystal clear. It's obvious. And it's horrifying, and I don't – I just – I wish we had more of him not in this context. I think that would be very interesting. And I wish we had more of his family, too. I don't know. Again, yeah. why would they – where are they? You know? Yeah. I don't know. Let's have, let's have somebody else. Well, of- either they did not want to be on it or they're mm. strange or – like I said, that's – the people that you want to see and they're not on there, it's mm-hmm. usually for – a reason either it doesn't fit the narrative of this mm-hmm. particular episode and the way they're you know because it has a beginning middle and end yeah as they all do but he smirks while talking about her wanting a divorce like divorce me the criminologist yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> my ba i told chronology? you i was gonna sleep with your ashes yeah. how much more do you want me to prove that i love oh, you God. babe i uh, lied about them never fighting or arguing they never did there was a the, I mean, scientists are like, we need to study you because you've never fought and argued. Yeah, which it's is so great. crazy. What a beautiful um, marriage. He Blessed. mentions her not having life insurance. So he's like, why would it's I murder? It's so weird. It, like, all these things, like, it is not, when you think back on Ray Rivera's grieving widow, and then you look at this guy, you're like, this could not be more disparate. The reactions of these two people could not be more different and more disturbingly so. He says that this was the last time he saw her mostly intact when he saw this, the the <sighs> layout of her or her bones. It's uh, so gross. Yeah, it's. Do you think this guy is back on like dating sites? He's like Rob He's like, from hey. Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> you can find me. Um, he uses a clip from the Netflix Dropbox. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like, it's a good angle of me. Yeah, he's like, listen, what, like, one of my strong suits, never loyalty, been, yeah, abject loyalty, never yeah. ever been arrested uh, for murdering never. a spouse, never, never keeps receipts, very good at bone <laughs> identification. <laughs> yeah, he's, i like, great at all of that. Wow, such a great guy. Do you need, I think, you really need to see this episode because you'll, you'll. You'll be perplexed, vexed, mm-hmm. dumbfounded. You know it's him. You know. You just – you don't know how. And that's why you this is – You don't know an, how. It's an episode not because it's not him. It's an episode because it is him. Because if he was just like, I don't know, I'm really upset, mm-hmm. there wouldn't be really an episode. Mm-mm. But it's – and uh, yeah, you're right. It it's really should be about Patrice and all we do is hope to f- find justice because this mm-hmm. is an unsolved mystery. But yeah. this – her husband is so captivating in the worst way. I love the framework of the timeline with this uh, husband character. And you're like, I'm just trying to put these pieces together to f- find out, like, what happened. And Rob Anders, mm-hmm. if you're out there and you want us to sh- share information. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a Dropbox, too. Yeah. You can absolutely reach out to us and do that to let you know. Mm-hmm. We're not uh, advocates of you. <laughs> you no, know, but we way. will send you a pin. Yeah. Somebody who did reach out mm-hmm. is Tom Reed mm-hmm. from the Berkshires UFO. Would like us to mention the governors and the historical societies, state induction letters shown, which he sent us. If you can mention the Berkshires UFO case is known as, I guess, officially the Reed family incident. Okay. See attached, and he has documentation attached. He's going, Reed family. The Tom Reed UFO Monument Park was built in 2015 and was made possible via donations by ancient aliens mm. and TV personalities. The park is free to the public, and you can now walk the bridge views and the filming of Unsolved Mysteries from Tom Reed, BerkshiresUFO.com, UFOPark.org. Okay. So just if you're out – and listen, if we were out there, we'd love to go out there and check it out. Absolutely. Is there benefactors that out there that would like to send us there? Maybe yeah. now is not the best time. Maybe, but maybe some the, TV personalities want yeah. to throw some money our way? Yeah. We are – we're ready to, uh, you know, go walk this – we're about to walk this bridge and – yeah. Uh, 
please let us celebrate this town and the UFO abductions that happened within it. Yeah. And, I would like nothing more. And if there's any other people from episodes that we've done that want to reach out. You want to be heroes? Uh, oh, solve yeah. Case? You know, I, I don't care if it's from the 1800s. Like, No, let's hit, solve it, baby. <laughs> hit us let's up. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm doing nothing. I'm sitting here. I got Coke Zero. What do you want? <laughs> 